A pope that kills cardinals. The depths of e-dating despair. The sad demise of cool. I'm Mr. Internet. Take my hand and I'll guide you through this digital litany of death and destruction. It doesn't have to be that kind of hand-holding where our fingers intertwine, that's weird. It could just be the cross-palm kind. You could take the most obscure piece of information and you could drop it into a best of list and it's instantly fascinating. And that's what Adi.com is all about. It's just a huge collection of best of lists and they cover everything from the most beautiful churches to the most unfortunate town names. <laughs> I'm not going to belabor this subject with a whole bunch of attempts at insight because I don't think there are any insights here. Just people are fascinated with exceptional things even if it's a very unexceptional category. Misspelled tattoos. I like this. I don't know what it is. Only God will juge me. Let's hope that God's not a stickler for spelling because the judgment's not going to go very well. Tomorrow never knows. I, I, tomorrow may know. Tomorrow has no idea. Not everything is, is that retarded. They actually have some stuff that's pretty cool, as I said. So there are some things that, you know, are a little more highbrow, but then you can descend as far as you want to into the dirty, filthy, gritty, meaningless stuff that makes us all laugh. That's there too. Ten worst popes of all time. That's pretty interesting. Uh, pope Stephen VI, who I always thought was a substandard pope. They have him as number one on the list, so we're in alignment there. Pope Leo X killed cardinals. Now there I gotta get clarification, because if he was killing songbirds, I don't see that that would merit uh, placement on the list, but if he was killing other members of the church, even then, aren't they under him? which frees him up to dispatch them, at least in those times. I keep wanting to call it Odie, but that's like odious, and that smells, and this thing does not smell. You could go there for hours and just look at stuff mindlessly. If you want to unplug, if you want to stop thinking, if your life sucks and you want to escape that fact, there is no better place to do it than Adi.com, because you can just look at these lists of stuff for hours and hours. It's great. You're going to love it. There's a pretty remarkable video out there of a, a DEA agent, Lee Page, conducting a firearm safety seminar for Florida school children. One problem, he uh, shoots himself in the foot in the middle of the demonstration. All of us talk about Glock 40. Okay, I'm the only one in this room professional enough that I know of to carry this Glock 40. I'm the only one. <laughs> we are here with uh, Roger Bryden. He's a firearms expert. Roger, I presume that you've seen this, this clip. I've seen it around the internet quite a bit. A lot of firearms instructors mm -hmm. know what that clip is. How do you feel about uh, Agent Page's execution of the curriculum? If that's what qualified to handle a gun is, something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> is there any part of you that, that, uh, that admired him at that point? <laughs> I had to admire that he was really trying to recover. <laughs> what about accuracy? His foot is not that big. He was able to hit it while he was moving. <laughs> Obviously, he's a, he seems like a pretty good marksman. I'd have to really argue with the statement that the fact that he shot his own foot is an attestment to his handling capabilities of shooting while on the move. Uh, I don't think that really qualifies. <laughs> um, he has claimed that he is, he is one of the best, if not the best, DEA agent of all time. His words, not mine. Based on what you've seen, uh, do you feel like he may be one of the best people they've got? No. You know, I used to be more adventurous, couch surf, go in a hostel. I'm old now, and I like to have things nice. And so I'm not interested at all in some kind of weird Canadian communal bullshit where you pass around a bong and sleep on someone's shag carpet. I don't want that. I want to stay in a completely dialed, modern, minimalist hotel, and there better be a bird of paradise on the nightstand and a $47 hat and a shower that can be seen from the bed 
And where do I get all that stuff? I get it at tablethotels.com. This is not William Shatner with an abacus talking about some Priceline shit and you end up at the Hyatt with some crappy gift basket. It's not that. You end up at some of the nicest hotels on the planet regardless of what country you're in. And that's what I love. I mean, how do you find a designy hotel in a country where a hole in the ground qualifies as a toilet? You go to tablethotels.com. The Royalton Hotel is in here. I actually love the Royalton. In New York, they won't let you in the lobby unless you have like a, like a cashmere scarf and an unconstructed blazer, they'll kick you right out. And you have to arch one eyebrow. You'll hate everyone else there. That's the mark of a good hotel. If you walk into the lobby and you're like overwhelmed with nausea at your fellow you know, hotel guest, you're in a good hotel. If you're wondering who rates the hotels, well, it's the people that stay in the hotels. It's, it's users like you and me, but it's also an A-list roster of tablet hotel celebrities. They've got Ben Kingsley, they've got Cuba Gooding Jr. You could stay in the same hotel that the actor who played Gandhi and the actor who played radio both stayed in. So like on the Gandhi side, hey, maybe they have a dirt floor option. Radio, you know they have those stainless steel bars in the shower so you don't fall down. That's terrible, but it's so true and you need those if you can't walk right. Here we have Salida Ebanks is a supermodel. She likes Amon Yara in the, uh, the Providenciales Turks and Calcos. All right, no, it's Kaikos. I don't even know how to say this place, man. If I could find a good hotel there, that's kind of says it all. So if you want to stay in a hotel where you will be pampered, you will pay too much, and room service will serve you macaroni and cheese made with truffle oil, go to tablethotels.com. Next stop, Mr. Internet. We'll be right back. Here on the Mr. Internet Show, we're constantly looking for ways to keep it fresh. And we know that's not gonna happen with the content. The content is gonna be played out and stale and it's gonna be delivered in a way that will put you to sleep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reskin our browser in the hopes that you'll find the show more interesting and tell your friends to watch. You can do this on your browser. Firefox is one of the more popular ones that you can reskin. So we are gonna go through a couple of different themes. Here's one, cats. I think we know how I feel about cats. Let's try this, hot rod flames, kind of played out. What about barbed wire? You know, your browser can kind of have that weak ass Pam Anderson theme. I dated an exotic dancer that had these little porcelain fairies that hung off a fishing line in one corner of the bedroom. And this mythical siren summer night theme harkens back to those days which were clouded by Pap's Blue Ribbon um, and a lot of other stuff that I don't care to get into. But I'm all better now. You know what, I gotta stop for a second because it's weird, like, everything's a badge these days. You know, what kind of car you drive, what clothes you wear, you're trying to project something. And so the whole thing with reskinning your browser, it's like you're badging something, but who's looking other than you? So you're badging yourself to yourself. Um, and it turns out that I think I'm pretty good to go right now. So, but if I begin to find myself lacking or the chemistry between me and me starts to deteriorate, I'll probably update to like a butterfly theme on my browser. But we've been doing great and I said we were gonna freshen things up. So what about this? I can live with that. All right, there you have it. I've reskinned my browser. I've rebadged myself. Mission accomplished. It's readily apparent that the DNA of Current is from the internet. It was started by Al Gore and his business, par his business partner, Joel Gaposhki, and, uh, you know, who sold falafel in New York. And then Gore teamed up with him and was like, look at this guy, if he can put meat vertical, he can put the internet on TV, you, you know, because that's just not normally how it's done. So, no, it's actually Al Gore and Joel Hyatt, not George Gaposhki. So stop writing it down, because I know you write down everything I say. A lot of TV networks have a website. And in almost every case, that website is just an afterthought. Current is a whole different deal. Everything comes from the internet and is then broadcast on TV. So it literally flips the model. Instead of being in these traditional half hour blocks, you have this endless stream of pods. And the pods could be three minutes, they could be 11 minutes. And a lot of the pods actually feature a progress bar, just like you would see at the bottom of a video that you were playing on the internet. So again, you have the language. I, didn't, I hate when people say again, but they didn't say it the first time. It implies that, well, first of all, it's confusing because you're like, well, I missed that part 
hurt. So it makes you feel bad. It makes me feel bad because I realize how pretentious it is to even start something out with again. Again, I'd like to reiterate that this is an excellent sandwich. So you're confused, I'm sickened. I'm on the homepage of Current. The top stories cover everything from the use of ecstasy to uh, children's access to the internet. I've clicked one tab over to viewer uploads. Basically, it puts a filter on the site where you're seeing 100% viewer generated content. For instance, Helen Keller actress falls off stage. There's a video of that. She has her eyes closed and she's pretending and she does go. <laughs> They even have a user-generated ad program where somebody out there can make a lifestyle ad for, say, Toyota, and they'll give them 2,500 bucks if it runs on current. If Toyota digs it and decides they're gonna run it somewhere else, they could make as much as 60 grand. So this is a very cool environment to play in. Um, I do love the content, I do love the format. But after you watch Current for a while, you may sense some self-importance, maybe some entitlement. you got these 24-year-old VJs that probably think because they're socially conscious or politically active, they're going to get some tail. That was my take. So uh, Current TV, check it out if you want to be up on the latest stuff or if you just want a big, huge helping of self-important 24-year-old. Next stop, Mr. Internet. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it down right now because I'm sickened, okay? This isn't an act. I can't summon the requisite enthusiasm to be up for this segment because this segment is about cool hunting. You know, it used to be that if you saw somebody and they looked cool, you could just assume they were cool because it was them that went to the trouble of hunting down all the clothes and accessories they had and the CD they were listening to and the bicycle they were riding or the skateboard that they were carrying under their arm. Well, not anymore. Now it just means they have an internet connection. And they went to a blog site like thecoolhunter.net or coolhunting.com. You might find something that's cool on your own, but culture is going to catch up in 15 minutes. Cool has been whored out to the masses. Oh my God, a Lucite boombox. Cool. My iPod dog is shaped like a gramophone. Check me out. Asshead helmets are the new thing. Denim asshead helmet. It's a helmet that is ensconced in denim with a, a smoked visor and a little ass pocket on the back of the head. And so I guess if you thought that it would be cool for your head to look like Jennifer Lopez's ass, then Cool Hunter has the recipe that you need. They took the croc aesthetic, which is already cool, and then they, they applied that croc shoe aesthetic to a, to a wedge for girls. It does not behoove us to be angry with the people that patronize sites like Cool Hunter. But it's the cool hunters themselves, the webmasters, the aggregators. You know what should happen to those people? When Prometheus gave man fire and they like, like nail gunned him to the side of a mountain and birds ate his liver every day, that should, that should be what happens to cool hunters. But different, you know, like a modern updated version. That's gross. This is getting macabre. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Hit. For those fluent in the language of the internet, our next guest will be very familiar, but for those who may not know him. My name is Whitey Cracker, YT Cracker, and I am an infamous computer hacker. Webmaster, DJ, MC, MC, spammer, digital gangster, and I love Mr. Internet. You seem like you're a veteran of, of some pretty hardcore nerd warfare, like, you know, hacking onto NASA's Goddard Space Center site, hacking the FAA, like a lot of the other things that you become known for. My experience with hacking is just watching Matthew Broderick in war games, and then, you know, the government panel van pulls up. Like, what, what happened to you when you did all these things? And they were obviously some pretty shocking right. stuff. Basically, you can see my case files. I don't, I don't know if they're over there. Stacks of paper that thick over there. I had like seven or eight different agencies investigating me at once. This is the discovery right here. <laughs> it looks like a Leo Tolstoy novel. It's thick. It is. It reads like one too. It's that boring. <laughs> so this is my like warrant, like right there. 
NASA, um, they have this thing called Office of the Inspector General, and they sent them over to my house to, like, conduct the investigation. They had to tell all the rest of the agencies to, like, back off. Yeah, when the agencies that are investigating you are so numerous that they have to coordinate with one another, it seems like you may have done something pretty cool. It was, yeah, it was, it was bad. I guess you never ended up uh, fleeing to an island where a reclusive computer scientist was flying no. a remote control pterodactyl. The, pass, the password was Joshua, though. That. <laughs> right. That's the secret. Um, let me ask you about uh, digitalgangster.com for, for people that may not be familiar with even what a web board is. Um, Digitalgangster.com is, I launched the site in 2005. A lot of like hackers on there just kind of use my board as a way to make a name for themselves. So it started to gain traction. Like my homeboy Camo hacked into like LexisNexis and broke Paris Hilton's cell phone, released the naked pictures of her. And then basically the shorthand for me is digitalgangster.com is a whole bunch of people that I definitely do not want to f with, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. Then B A start the screen goes white. Explain for our viewers like nerdcore, you know, like that's kind of an interesting intersection of, of you know two different worlds. Um, I'd say that nerdcore is basically just just nerdy hip hop. Um, <laughs> kind of in the vein like rhymes about nerdy stuff like Star Wars and computers and the internet and <laughs> not getting laid and <laughs> I don't know. The stereotype of a nerd is kind of an introverted dude, but you, you obviously got to be pretty brave socially to get up on stage and, and lay down what you lay down in front of oh, people. absolutely. You know? That's the whole thing is, I mean, if you listen to, to gangster rap, hip hop or whatever, they'll speak in, in about drugs and stuff in like this code, you know, like no one knew what a bird was or, you know, even like <laughs> Superman and a hoe right, or anything like right. that. Like, no one knows what that is until like it starts to proliferate in like the regular vernacular. So the same thing goes on with the computer sh there's a lot of in-jokes and stuff that I'm saying, speaking to my people, but more or less I want people that aren't nerds to kind of like appreciate like the nerd game more and stuff. Like, oh, that, that kid's like kind of cool because he plays Magic the Gathering. I probably shouldn't go beat his ass. Because <laughs> that was me. I'm talking to my 12-year-old self. Like, chill. Were you on the forefront of this whole, this whole sort of fusion? And, and where is it at now? Is it getting bigger? Oh yeah, um, I'm doing a show in Amsterdam next week, and that's insane. Like I said, it's gone global. Like it's it's that huge, but it's cool. Like I used to just fake like I was a rapper, and now I'm a real rapper. So I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it started yeah. off ironic, and then next thing you know, it's real. There's a career potential out of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen, uh, YT, it's been a pleasure. And we'd love to keep a relationship with you. If you ever got something you want to talk to us about or, or you got anything you want to break, we, we're all ears. So, Sounds uh, good. And if you ever need any favors pulled, you can always holler at me. You know, some right, ex-girlfriend, right. you know, some stupid boss, anything like that, you let me know and uh, we'll make their <laughs> life a living hell. Hey, man, if you guys could hack the Plum TV website and just, you know, move us up in the, in the visual hierarchy there, that would be nice. Trash you know? it like that? We can take a look at it and see what's up. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm really happy the show has a relationship with this guy, <laughs> man. All right, Whitey. Take care. Good, good stuff, man. Mr. Ernest, stay up. You guys, you guys have going. There are lots of dating sites out there, Match.com, et cetera, et cetera. Then there's eHarmony.com, which I believe is the creepiest of all dating sites. Um, what really makes the site creepy is that after a cursory bunch of questions about your age and gender and your appearance, uh, they move right into what amounts to a psychological profile. You know, here are some of the questions like, what is your current marital status? Interesting. I guess that's like e-infidelity, which would be cool. <laughs> I am satisfied with my level of emotional development. Um, I think that's a good desperation meter. Are you a neo-Nazi? I mean, there's subtext to these questions. Physical appearance, are you a fat slob? How much do you smoke? How much do you drink? How important is the amount your partner drinks to you? Who's checking like not important at all? I like when my partner blacks out. You know what I mean? You can get harmonious with somebody that's unconscious. <laughs> People who are controlling irritate me. And I'm wondering like who's like, that's not a problem for me. See, this is where I really, I think what they do on eHarmony is they identify vulnerabilities, they then plug in another person who's equipped to leverage those vulnerabilities, and then you just call it harmony. Um, you know, you, you take somebody that's codependent, you match them up with a controlling bitch, and you got a beautiful 30-year marriage. Taking the tour on eHarmony, it all starts with me. 
and I'm looking for compatible people. And by compatible, I mean other people that other people didn't like. And the first person is Megan. She's in a spaghetti strap uh, printed little deal. I'm not gonna lie, Megan looks pretty good. The smaller pictures at the bottom look more like real people, like Lewis and Michelle here, and Lewis has a bit of a Cro-Magnon brow, and he's clearly got a bad case of rosacea. That's, you know, I can buy that. I wanna come now, look, I don't look good but I could meet somebody that does. You're not a shoe in on eHarmony. Like Match.com, everybody can be on it. eHarmony, um, you can be rejected. Here's Shannon. She was matched up with someone. Why do they want to show me these? I feel bad. It's like, oh, oh she's taken already, you know? So eHarmony's got a section called Success Stories. Josh and Tanya Lee. There's no space between Tanya and Lee. So you're already like irritated before she even opens her mouth. I'm Tanya Lee. Oh, hey, Tanya Lee. No, Tanya Lee. Then we met. And we just saw each other and instant connection. Snap. We just started making out. It, it was it's amazing. amazing. Everything we do together is fun. We were dancing at 5 in the morning with drywall dust all over so us. So spontaneous. And mud and splatter paint. And so we're going to hit it full we'll force. They're going to hit it full force. This makes me want to recede from the world and take up residence in a Unabomber shack. If you're on your last leg emotionally and you're cool admitting it, in fact, you want to build it right into a profile, then eHarmony is for you. Then eHarmony. I'm all of a sudden I'm from Ireland. I got a pining eHarmony. <laughs> they don't care how much I drink. I don't even know what accent that is. It's like a Rastafarian Scotsman. eHarmony. A thriving community of like-minded people that have been <laughs> handed their ass on the dating scene <laughs> and are incapable <laughs> of... <laughs> All right. Do we have an ending in yeah. there? Is there like, I don't even think you could just end on laughing. <laughs> And the minute I saw her, I just knew we were perfect for each other. So that's our show. Thanks for watching. And I'm, I'm not saying that in passing. Like, I really mean, like, thank you. I, I want to thank you effusively for watching because I don't know if anyone does. You might be the only person. And so I want to I I thank you.